Pokemon? I think it's a Pokemon. No idea. I like the circle more. That explains what's been making that noise while I died. Oh, it's a fidget wheelie. I just gotta get all four in the Ooh. circle. It's a thing. It's a thing. One, two. I think it's one, two, three. Is there some other dinosaur? There's a DJ dinosaur here. <laughs> This is what a kid's bathroom sounds like. It's like it's just using it. Oh, it's supposed to be. Oh god, that's so strong. It's supposed to be <laughs> the bleeding. It's a little shiny. Gosh, oh, that's one of them. Terrible. Twenty four. Ah! I got my health. Jade has this one. My daughter Jade has that one. And I think we did it. We got to do the Okay, we are going to talk about a case that I found while looking through cases. Yeah, this was weird. It is called Bob Crane's Murder Remains Unsolved for Decades. I've never even heard of this case until just recently. Friday marks 40 years. Oh, no. It's 40 years since the most sensational celebrity mur murder in Arizona history. The murder of actor Bob Crane, the store of Hogan Sears, was belonged to death while he slept in his Scottsdale apartment, and no one ever went to prison for the crime. It remains one of the top unsolved murders in American history. Physical evidence from Crane's murder has since been packed in boxes, including Crane's bed, Crane's fingerprints, and fingerprints from the suspected killer. John Carpenter was the person who everyone thinks it is. I don't see them looking at any other suspects, which is bad in any case, because when you don't look at other suspects and you focus on one, you could be wrong. But he is a, the most likely, which is the thing. He did stuff that if Crane would have told, he would have been probably in a lot of trouble or got it himself, who knows. There might have been a lover's quarrel. There were also endless 
tapes of witness interviews. Crane's handmade uh, tapes, uh, photographs of his day plan stained with his own blood, recovered from his bedside table. These are also personal items from a star life that was dramatically cut short and pieces of a tantalizing case that was captured the nation's imagination for 40 years. During my career, quote, I had a lot of big cases, but the Bob Crane's case takes them all, said former um, county attorney Ricky Crane defined television leading man in the 1960s and still does in today in endless reruns. In the summer of 1978, Crane was starring Beginner's Luck at the Windmill Diner Theater in Scottsdale when his luck ran out in the early morning of hours of June 29th. Someone budging Crane to death while he slept in his apartment. There was no struggle, no sign of force entry. Fox 10 has uncovered graphics, never seen police video take inside Crane's apartment as the medical examiner shaved Crane's batted head for a closer look at the fatal wound. In the graphic video, an electric cord cut from a video camera was seen tied around Crane's neck. Suspiciously quickly turned to Crane's longtime pal, John Carpenter, who was hanging out with Crane in the hours before the murder. Yeah, that's never a good thing. If someone dies and you're the last one to see them, it's never a good thing. Even if you did nothing, it just makes you a suspect. Even if you didn't do anything. Two shared a dark obsession, videotaping their sexual encounters with countless women. This all-American image of, quote, him, of my dad as Colin Hogan as the dark side, said Crane's son, Bob Crane Jr. Colin Hagen isn't who we want, who we thought he was. It became kind of a hobby that went too far. I think their friendship revolved around women and, uh, other things that I don't know how to pronounce. Carpenter became the leading suspect when blood was discovered in his rental car one day after the murder. Yeah, that's two strikes against you, dude. The blood matched Crane's rare blood type. Ooh, three. Police theorized Carpenter killed Crane because Crane was trying to savor the relationship. Towards the end of his life, my dad was definitely pulling away from John Carpenter, said Crane Jr. Retired Scottsdale detective Dennis interviewed Carpenter. He was very stick the first time I interviewed him. Uh, Dennis recounted. First time I talked to him, I knew we were dealing with a guy that was going to be very hard to crack. Detectives tried to get Carpenter to confess, but Carpenter never cracked. 16 years would pass before he was eventually put on trial for Crane's murder. In 1990, Ricky, then the new county attorney, reopened the Crane murder case. Investigate start from scratch. We re-interviewed everyone involved in the case. We tracked down each and every person, said Barry, a former homicide investigator with the Scottsdale Police Department. We just basically eliminated everybody else on the planet. Okay, so good. If I was having trouble finding them talk about everyone else. And once again, one name, one suspect emerged. 16 years passed and investigators still lacked hard physical evidence tying Carpenter to the murder. DNA tests on the blood found in Carpenter's car were inclusive and there was no way to prove the blood came from Bob Crane. That was a big deal, said Mike Lake, who was the jury foreman in the case, if we had DNA from that car, we would have been he would have been found guilty, a hundred percent positive. Without that critical evidence, the jury found Carpenter not guilty. They wanted the DNA, and in the end, we didn't have significant evidence to get a guilty verdict. So.
wrong one. The clouds of suspects haunted Carpenter until his death four years later. To this day, police insist they identify the killer. Okay, so there's more on this case. That it was just the wealthy suburbs of Phoenix in the heart of desert, sparkle of luxury resorts, caretaking to snowbirds, in what Arizona called the Valley of the Sun. June 29th, 1978, likely began as nearly as Scottsdale summer days do. Temperatures soar above 100 degrees high by noon, and well healed, residents took refuge in their heavily air-conditioned valley villages, leaving the wide streets as empty as any southwest ghost town. It didn't end that way. Responding to a call from one of the city's apartment complex, local cops headed out on a very un Scottsdale. Tublin in a diminutive lift first apartment, they found the battered body of a shirtless 49-year-old man swindled in bed with two huge gas gashes above his left ear and an electric cord knotted around his neck. It was clear he had been in good shape and had salt and pepper hair, but gore most other details. Blood was splattered all over the wall Ugh. and ceiling. There was so much of it, the victim pillow was drenched. After lear leaving, learning the apartment was leased to the nearby Windmill Diner Theater, police asked the theater manager, Ed Beck, to identify the corpse. There was no way I could identify him from one side. Beck told the press, the other side, yes. The bludgeoned form had been had once been Bob Crane, a TV star known to millions as the wise, crafty title character of the 1960s sitcom Hogan's Heroes. Cameras worked behind closed doors. Four decades later, there's still unsolved slaying of uh, the actor with its links to another world of sex addiction and other poor other issues has spawned a 2002 movie at least five books three investigations and a vast spider web of speculation the steamy side of crane's life is no mystery his obsession with uh, sex hurt his career and possibly got him killed the actor's son robert recalls that his father dressing room was inappropriate, where the stars stored uh, pearl rods, negative